Aloha. Thank you, Lynn. Mahalo. <laughs> I was sitting here giggling at that too, Rabbit Benny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And um, and full of should. Yeah, we talked about the word should uh, yesterday in our group. And uh, in the way of mastery, Joshua asked us to burn the word should, to actually write it down on a bit of paper and literally like go outside and, and burn it. <laughs> and um, full of should, yeah. And that's the truth. We're shooting on ourselves, telling ourselves we should be doing this, we should be doing that. And as Lynn was sharing then, uh, the detachment. Detachment is um, really the key, realizing that, you know, it is about letting go. And uh, just now I opened it up. I was asking, getting a feeling. <laughs> I should burn, should. <laughs> yeah, I should burn, should. <laughs> Lots of love, yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, so I, w- I just had no idea what I was going to share about, and I was asking, and I had a feeling, my first feeling, I was like, hmm, will I open up the Wave Mastery to any page? And the feeling was... Let's open up the Course in Miracles to any page. So I have a uh, Course in Miracles open here. The correction for lack of love is what I opened it to, and the feeling uh, was straight away, yes, let's share on this. <laughs> and uh, something that's come up a few times, um, <laughs> run right on the board, there should or get off the part, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's too funny. Um, lately, what has come up for me a few times is uh, we've got to know what we don't want. This is Abraham Hicks shared this, I remember this, many, many years ago. We get really clear on what we don't want so we know what we do want. And when I hear that today, I think of, uh, you know, choose love, just choose love, choose love again. We're choosing again and again. And when we're choosing love, we're becoming very clear on fear. We get clear on the voice of fear. We're getting clear that we've been caught up in the story of separation. And uh, when I hear that expression now, getting clear on what we don't want, so then we can make way for what we do want, there is the clearing out the blockage to love. So becoming very clear on what fear is, becoming very clear on the voice of the fear. And that is the section that I've opened to here, the correction for lack of love. Um, I have the sparkly open here on page, let's see here, 37. It's in chapter 2. Uh, let's see, it's ways in there in chapter 2. <laughs> but uh, the, the title here is the correction for lack of love. Okay, I'm going to read the first little bit here. It's um, pretty cool. Uh, The first corrected step is no first, capitalized, no first, that this is an expression of fear. So the first, this is the very first corrected step for lack of love. First corrected step for... uh, Fulfilling our souls of love, or receiving the love that we are, receiving our truth. So the first corrective step is know first that this is an expression of fear. Then say to yourself that you must somehow have willed not to love, or the fear which arises from behavior will conflict. Let me see here. Let me see how I've read this. Then say to yourself that you must somehow have willed not to love or the fear which hmm, love or the fear which arises from behavior will conflict could not have arisen then the whole process is nothing more than a series of pragmatic steps in the larger process of accepting the atonement as the remedy so we've got to we really uh, turn within we're uh, taking what, what that tells me there is that's the step of taking whole responsibility realizing that this must have arisen from here. We come to realize that the core, the core of our truth is right here. The core of all of our truth is right here at our presence. Uh, The core of our heart, all our hearts are one. 
and all is arising and falling from right here. <laughs> and uh, we come to find that as we take full responsibility, that uh, as we take full responsibility, that our hearts are open in that moment. Because you know, how do we know when we when we're willing to take full responsibility? There is not a knowing of the intellectual world that arises with that. There's not anything that tells us why we should <laughs> be taking responsibility or what it's all about. But we come to a point where we realize that this is all, this, there's these thoughts that are arising, all that's arising and falling is right here. There is something here that I need to take a look at. We turn back within and we have a look at self to see, you know, what is... Um, what is it that's arising here? And we, we take a really good look at our thoughts. We begin to take a really good look at our thoughts and we catch the ones that uh, we know are not love. We begin to release all thoughts that are unlike love, that are not love. And we know in our hearts, we know in our, in our bodies, we can tell when we're thinking a thought that is unlike love. We know, we can tell, in a, we get a feeling of disconnection. We know immediately that we're disconnected from love by the way that we feel within. We feel crappy. <laughs> we feel, we, we recognize the shoulds. <laughs> we recognize the shoulds that are coming up. And we recognize the, the feeling of, of uh, being a victim, what it is to be a victim. And we become very aware of uh, this a disconnected feeling that is other than love. And we come to recognize that these thoughts that are arising are almost like they're arising out of nowhere and they're returning to nowhere. They're rising and they're falling and uh, there is nothing uh, that seems to be um, behind them, so to speak. We see that they're just arising and they're falling. And we see, as, as men were sharing before, that attachment. There's the attachment that as the thoughts arise, they, um, when we're unaware we automatically are attaching to those thoughts. In our unawareness, we're caught up in the dream world, pain and suffering, believing that that's all we've got, believing that this is it, that this is our world, this is our truth. And uh, so to become aware so we can detach uh, is really the key. And I remember early on getting this message over and over, Holy Spirit, over and over, I'd be receiving this message from within, from our higher self, uh, that awareness is key. Awareness is key. And uh, as we take a step back and we recognize the unaware state, we become aware <laughs> of the unaware. And uh, we realize in that moment we have taken a step back out of the picture. We've taken a step back. And, and stepping out of the picture, we're stepping out of that unaware state stepping away from looking through the eyes of the young. Now we're taking a step back and we're becoming the witness of the story of separation. We're looking through the eyes of love. And in this place, we're standing in our aware state. We're standing in unawareness, looking through the eyes of love. And from here, we are able to uh, see clearly that all is arising, all is falling, and that there is really uh, no reason to be attaching to the story, for attaching to the, the, the thoughts of fear, um, frustration, anger, pain, whatever these, whatever is arising in the moment, we feel in our presence, we feel in our body that uh, what it is to be disconnected. And in that moment, we uh, we choose again. We realize this is not my choice. I see that this has all come from me. That I have uh, made this choice, and in my unaware state of continuing continuing to believe. That this is all I've got. <laughs> now I know that this is not all I've got. Now I know that this is really my imagination. It's my story. That I'm making this up. It's all coming from here. And uh, in that moment, and then we find it gets faster and faster that we become aware of the um, catch. There's this catch in this unaware state. We become aware of our. Um, imprisonment in the unaware state. And as we become aware, we're uh, deprisoning, <laughs> unprisoning ourselves. We're, we're, we're releasing ourselves every time we become aware. Every time we become aware of the unawareness, we're uh, releasing 
more and more, and we're um, in that aware state, witnessing become awareness, we are becoming, um, uh, our faith is growing, our faith in truth is growing, our faith in love is growing. As we're looking through the eyes of love, we taste the peace of God, we taste our truth, we taste the knowledge of God, and we recognize in that holy moment that the unaware state is definitely not our choice. <laughs> And it's very easy in that moment to let go of the unaware state and to no longer choose it and to, in that moment, declare um, in our hearts, we declare that we are choosing love. And we come to find that it is in uh, becoming aware of the unawareness, becoming aware of um, how we got caught, how we, how we, we were kind of trapped in this story of separation. And uh, you know, and, and, and just being really aware again of what our bodies are telling us, even you know, just feeling the feeling within, listening to our feelings, and we feel the disturbance within the body. We feel the disturbance in our presence, with the feeling of disconnection, and we come to realize that now we begin to say to ourselves, in, in in a beautiful holy instant, we become aware in a moment of listening to a thought of fear. And we, and we go, aha, that's what it feels like to be in separation. That's what separation feels like. A disconnected feeling, and just feeling crappy within, of listening to the voice of fear and running with that. And we, we come to see, aha, that's what it, that's what separation feels like. And so we're basically turning around and saying no to the feeling of separation. No to the story of separation. No to the idea of separation. We're saying no to the tiny mad idea. And we find that we're continually uh, repeating this over and over, every moment of forgiveness, every moment of uh, becoming aware in the moment, stepping back, catching the unaware state, detaching from the story, releasing the... Uh, the story, just releasing our hold, that there's nothing else, that that's all we had to hold on to, and realizing that there is another way, there is a beautiful way, beautiful way of peace, of truth, of happiness, and we get to, we can define it, we get to have this happy dream, we begin to see the eye, as eyes are opening, as hearts are opening, as our minds are opening, we become the witness that there is nothing here to run from, there is nothing wrong, <laughs> there's nothing bad, uh, there is an unfolding of a story, there is the unfolding of the story of the dream, and that we get to uh, step back and let go of all the meaning that we've ever given, and allow ourselves to just be. <laughs> and allow ourselves to uh, fall into the happy state, realizing that this is our natural state, that we uh, come to find that this is not about escaping the dream. It's not about escaping darkness or escaping the ego, but it is about embracing all of it, and we come to find that, oh, this is not really about uh, exiting the dream, but this is really about embracing all of it uh, so that we may have the happy dream realizing that this is our goal is to uh, is for the happy dream is for the real world the forgiven world and that God takes the final step in uh, the final release from the dream but we come to find that that we can be released within the dream completely by giving up all the meaning all the attachments that we have and uh, and living in happiness right here right now and and then as we hear so often, um, it's being written, it's being channeled, you know, uh, let's bring heaven to earth. And we, we come to find that heaven is right here, that heaven is on earth, heaven is right here. Heaven is everything, and that we are the heaven, and that we can have that here. And so we come to find that, and this has become clearer and clearer to me more recently, is that you know, and it's kind of a relief. <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice relief to realize that, you know, we're not. It's it, this is not about having to exit the dream, it's escaping from the dream, escape or getting away from the darkness, escaping from the ego. 
It's not about、uh, having to fix things and change things so that we're not caught up in attachment, so that we're not caught up in the meaning. We can find that that when Jesus tells us that our goal is for the real world, so that God can take that final step, we come to realize that that's our goal. But we,、uh, you know, that the happiness, bringing heaven to earth, that having our happiness here,、uh, bringing love to earth, being the love, being the presence of love, so that we can witness love on earth,、uh, right here. Right now, and that we can、uh, be available, be completely available as love would have us be, as we are in our natural state, being completely available and open and、uh, aware in every moment. We're going to read on here in this section because we have the, the steps. Uh, Jesus has given us the steps. They can be summarized as follows. So these are the steps in the correction for lack of love. So the very first step is we know first that this is fear. We become very clear that that this is a fearful thought. That we are feeling the disconnection. We're caught up in fear. We become very clear. That's our first step. Being clear that we are.、Um, That this is fear. The second step, fear arises from lack of love. We realize that in turning our back on God, in turning our back on the truth, now we've turned away. We've turned back, turned toward the story of separation, and now in our unawareness, we're caught up in the story of separation. We come to find that fear is arising in our mind, in our belief in separation. Realizing that fear is arising on our belief that we have,、uh, that we are unworthy, that we have, there is something that we have done, that we're running, that there's something to fix, there's something to change, there's some something we've got to find to fulfill ourselves. We're always looking and hunting. We come to realize that all the fear is arising because we turn our back on God. So the, not the step number two, fear arises from lack of love and turning our back on God. That's the、um, second step that we become aware of. We come to realize the third step, and again, this is in chapter two, under the correction for lack of love. The third step is the only remedy for lack of love is perfect love. The only remedy for lack of love is perfect love. So, of course, in that moment, we know in our hearts that this is the answer. That love is the answer. And we're choosing love. We're choosing the truth. And step four, perfect love is the atonement. So in step four is that letting go, letting God, allowing completely, realizing that、uh, and the perfect love that I'm choosing right here, right now, is for me to step down, get out of the way, and、uh, choose the atonement, choose the atonement, choosing to listen. Always to the heart of God, choosing to listen always to、uh, our higher self, to our one higher self, to the one Holy Spirit within. Choosing, and and, and I've come to see on my journey that that when we make that choice, that that's really you know, there's really nothing else to be concerned about. Just to make that choice, to be aware that that's our choice, moment to moment. That now. Realizing that when we're choosing the atonement, when we're choosing love, that in doing so we're choosing to listen to love all the way. We're choosing to open our hearts to love. We're choosing to drop all that we have ever believed in, all that we have、uh, made our truth. That we drop all of it, and we allow ourselves to remember. We come to realize that in the atonement that we are offering us our、um, Body as a vessel for communication, that we become the communication of love, that we become as we let go, as we step back and looking through the eyes of, of love. Now we're calling on our truth, and that we become the vessel for love to flow. We become the offering of heaven on earth. We become the offering of love on earth. 
and we come to find that perfect love is the atonement. And we come to find that making that choice is the heart of heart choice <laughs> that we make. That's the choice that uh, will take us all the way. But when we're listening to love, when we're listening to the truth rising within, that as we're listening, that that's all we need to do is let go of everything else and, and listen. And how beautiful when as a voice gets clearer and clearer, stronger and stronger, as we uh, do these steps, we take these steps. So the first step, we recognize that this is fear. Second step, we realize that fear is only arising from lack of love. And we can take this step in step two, fear arises from lack of love. We can take that step by um, asking ourselves if we're caught up in the story and we're having a little difficulty stepping out of the story, stepping away from the story, what we find is really helpful is to ask ourselves if we're, you know, if we're looking upon someone who has seemingly attacked, said something uh, that we're now angry about, <laughs> we can um, turn back within and ask ourselves, where is this in me? And realizing that we are all one, that we're all one, and we realize that there is uh, no separation in uh, uh, whatever's arising. And so as we become the witness of what is what's this seeming attack, the seeming anger of someone who's, uh, for example, that someone has been angry at us, and we take a step back and we're feeling like the victim. And we ask ourselves, where is this in me? And when we ask ourselves, where is this in me? We're turning our attention away for a moment. We're turning away from the anger. Because in asking, where is this in me? We're realizing that, uh, in asking, where is this in me? We're realizing in that moment, we are actually willing. We're opening ourselves up to taking responsibility. And which is, and I found to be quite, such an important part on this journey. Until we're willing to take responsibility, then we, you know, we're, we're looking through the eyes of the victim. If we're not taking responsibility, we're telling ourselves that someone else needs to take responsibility. <laughs> In other words, we're telling ourselves that there's separation that does exist telling ourselves that there's somebody outside that let him take the responsibility or let her take it or let Jesus take it. <laughs> and we're projecting. Yeah, hi, Robbie. Hello, hi, Robbie. Yeah, and, and then we're projecting. And um, in the human equation, what we wrote up on the board, yes. And, and we're um, realizing, we come to realize that as we ask ourselves, where is this in me? We come to find that you know it's it is it is truly such a gift that we receive in such a holy instant when we're truly open to seeing where is this in me, we will know in a holy heartbeat. <laughs> we will be provided with an instant where we were caught up in the same story, where we were caught up, and where we were judging the same situation. We will see it in our own journey. And when we see it in our own journey, then we take a look at ourselves and we go, oh, wow, you know, I did this. I acted in this way too. I was angry like this at a brother. I did this too. Same thing. And we realize in that holy instant that, aha, this arose here. This is, this is where it arose. And now it's being mirrored back to me. My brother is mirroring this to me in this moment. Because this was my belief, my judgment, that's being buried. Although it was my judgment, and it's coming, and my brother is mirroring this to me in the moment. So I can see what, where my belief is. I can see that I have believed in the story of separation. And we can instantly forgive ourselves, realizing we, we, we wish to be forgiven, 
we're choosing forgiveness, we forgive ourselves in a moment, we, we realize, ah, oh, I was so unaware. I was so caught up in the story of separation. I really believed that this was going on. I really believed there was someone separate from myself. And we realize, we need to realize that, uh, that, that in judging the situation, and then if we're really honest with ourselves, we can even uh, go deeper and realize um, our judgment on ourselves and the guilt that we carried forward. We walked away, oh gosh, you know, I was kind of mean, maybe I should have done this, I should have done that, I said this, I said that, and we can, we can even become the witness of our judgment on ourselves. Ultimately, it is judgment on self. And, um, and you probably read on the board there, giving up one identity for God's. Yeah. Where, and we become, yes, and we become the witness. We're becoming the witness of the story. And in this moment, when we have to give ourselves and we bring our attention back to the current moment, to what seemingly has been arising here, we come to realize that uh, we are very willing to forgive because now we're feeling compassion. And we find that out of true forgiveness is where is compassion. What arises is compassion. It's very easy to forgive now. We see, ah, oh, gosh, you know, we have been acting this way. Now we see this is our mirror coming back to remind us that this is where our belief has laid, where we have judged ourselves, that we have believed in separation, and we feel compassion for our brother. We realize that, that, that he or she is a beautiful mirror to realize that there really is no separation between us, that this is our mirror, they're acting as our mirror, coming from the core of the one heart, and we come to realize we are sewing this together, and that we're, we're all here for each other, that we truly are here for each other, and uh, you know, I remember early on in my journey, forgiveness um, seeming very complex. <laughs> I remember wanting to figure out how this miracle could happen. That you know, when we when we uh, forgave ourselves, when we forgave uh, what was seemingly arising, when we're coming from forgiveness, that how is this really fixing things? <laughs> I remember having the mind of the fixing mind still, and I'm um, coming to see today that that this journey. Uh, we cannot undertake this journey unless if we're willing to look with forgiving eyes. It is with forgiving eyes where we're um, able to see through the eyes of love over and over. We're able to um, stand in the shoes of truth and looking through the eyes of love for length for lengthy periods of time. We find that we can uh, stay in this moment and be the truth that we came forth to be, that we can be the example of heaven on earth. And that all, all it took was being willing to look again and being willing to step back and allow the truth to be shown. I remember one time, um, I was in a study group a few years ago, a gentleman asked how could he forgive the man that murdered his son. And I wasn't the facilitator for the group. However, the facilitator turned to me and said, do you have anything for him? What do you feel to share? <laughs> and um, I kind of sat back and uh, went, okay. Got really quiet and asked myself, asked Holy Spirit, what would I share? And what came to me, and I just said the words directly to him, was um, if you had murdered someone, wouldn't you want to be forgiven? And I could see the tightness in his eyes melting away. And I could see in his eyes this moment of understanding it's like there was a, an understanding that kind of glossed over that came. And 
all of a sudden, he, he just, he smiled, and he said, yes, I would want to be forgiven. And then he said, thank you, and he smiled, and there was nothing else said. And, and we could always ask ourselves that, wouldn't we want to be forgiven? And that's where um, I find that that exercise of turning back to self and saying, where is this in me? This person that's just been shouting at me, that's been angry, that's been uh, you know, mad for, or whatever this reason is that they're mad at. You know, we, and we say to ourselves, where is this in me? And just turning back within to look at self is that responsibility where we're turning back to self. Now we turn our attention away from pointing the finger, we're turning our attention away from the belief and the story of separation. And in this moment of turning back within and asking ourselves, we realize that this is where our hearts open. And um, as I look at my journey, I see that the beautiful gift that we give to ourselves is in asking, is that we, we really can't ask too much. <laughs> That we, uh, when we're asking, where is this in me? When we're asking, wouldn't I want to be forgiven? If this were me that had murdered, wouldn't I want to be forgiven? Wouldn't I want to be set free? Or would I want to be tortured and held as a prisoner? And we, when we ask ourselves these questions, uh, we're turning within, we're turning to ask within. We're asking ourselves, how does this feel? How would this feel? And, you know, that beautiful quote from the Bible, <laughs> probably one of the most read ones, ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. And we come to find that, you know, we really can't ask enough. Because as we're asking, in that moment of asking, we're turning to face God. We're turning to face the Holy Spirit self. We're turning to face our one true self. And in that moment of asking, we open. Our hearts open. Our eyes open. Our minds open. And we're asking and we're listening and we're waiting to receive. And when we ask, and we truly are asking, and we truly want to know, <laughs> When we're truly asking, we will know in a holy instant, we know so quickly where this was in us, where we did not forgive ourselves, where this was in us, where we judged ourselves, where this was in us, this action, these words, this, this thought, these feelings. And we know that we would want to be forgiven. And as we look back, at a time when we become the witness that, ah, this is in me. This has arisen from me. Now this, my brother is a mirror revealing this to me. And as we realize that moment, it's very easy, very quickly, we can forgive ourselves. And then the more we do the work, the very, the quicker we forgive ourselves. Because we know in a holy instant, as soon as we become a witness of where this was in me, we realize in that moment, ah, oh, you know, we can we become the witness of how unaware we were of the truth, of how unaware we were of love, and how caught up in the story of separation that we were in our unawareness. And we instantly witness our innocence. As we step back and we're looking through the eyes of awareness, and we're looking on unawareness, we very quickly realize the innocence of unawareness. How can an unaware state be guilty? <laughs> we realize very quickly that the unaware is so innocent. And then we go about our day and we continue to step back into the shoes of awareness and we're watching, we become the witness as Robbie put on the board there, yeah, we witness it. We become the witness. And as we become the witness in that beautiful holy moment of watching through the eyes of love, 
we realize, we know in our hearts instantaneously, we know, we see the unaware with their back on God, and we realize that that's our mirror, there's our mirror, ah, there's more of myself that can be seen right here, oh, I can uh, see more of myself here, by becoming uh, responsible, by realizing that it's all a mirror, and we can walk around and, uh, in our aware state, choosing awareness, choosing love, and watch the unaware and see our own seemingly past, <laughs> seeming history of unawareness, and we get to forgive it all day long. <laughs> we get to, we become the witness, and we, and it, we, we feel compassion immediately, watching through the eyes of awareness and realizing the unaware state, how could we not forgive a brother in his unawareness? And then in that beautiful holy moment, we see that that is our own unawareness. And that through these beautiful aware eyes, <laughs> through our own awareness, we get to witness it instantaneously. And we watch. And we can see in that moment that all fear, step two, all fear arises from lack of love. When we witness the unaware, the unaware brother, we become the witness of his unawareness with his back on God, not knowing, not believing, not having any faith in God, but believing wholeheartedly in the dream of separation. And we can see in that moment that the fear, we, we witness, we become the witness of the fear, of the anger, of the frustration, we become the witness that that is all arising from a lack of love. It's arising from a, having his back on God. And it becomes really clear that all that is arising because in his beautiful, unaware state, we see that it is a beautiful state, a very innocent state to be. We see that it's only arising as he has his back on God. <laughs> Robbie wrote, yes, amen, heart to heart, yes, heart to heart, yeah, and that's what we, as we, you know, go about our day, there's our opportunity, every moment, we choose awareness, in the moment of choosing awareness, we're choosing, we're facing God, we're facing our truth, we're facing our one heart, our one truth in that moment, and looking through the eyes of awareness, we become the witness of, of compassion everywhere. <laughs> we become the compassion as we watch the unaware state. We can't help but feel compassion. <laughs> we, we, we see innocence everywhere. And we want to wake up our brother. In other words, we want to wake up ourselves. We realize that this is our mirror, this unaware state of a brother here with his back on God, in his unaware state, beating himself up, not realizing that he, in a heartbeat, he can turn around and face the truth and let go of the story of separation. And we come to realize that that's our mirror, that we get to do that, that we don't leave it up to him. <laughs> that we get to do that in the moment. We get to wake ourselves up over here and over here. And without words, there's words not needed, but in our heart, and we go, as Robbie said, we go heart to heart. And it's an open heart to an open heart. And we know that, you know, ego, we're, 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 when we're looking through the eyes of awareness of love, Love looks on love. Love sees the holy innocent. Love is compassion. That we look through loving eyes. And in that moment, we realize that we are going from heart to heart. That our heart is open. And therefore, opens our brother's heart. We realize that this is that we are right there. That there is no separation, and that 
our brother no longer needs to be moving in an unaware state because our awareness meets his awareness and our heart meets his heart. <laughs> yes, and that is pure joy. Robbie wrote on the board, that is pure, pure joy. And we set each other free. Yes. We set each other free. <laughs> yeah, we realize that we just set ourselves free. We realize that uh, that we do have we can offer the miracle in every moment as we become the witness of our unaware state and we get to offer the miracle the miracle is uh, natural see Rabbi Benny's in the room hello by Rabbi Benny as we were talking the other day about the miracle <laughs> such a natural moment of truth of heaven on earth and we realize we come to realize that there is no other way. <laughs> that there is no other way. We come to realize that this is the way of God. Because that second step there, fear arises from lack of love. So we could also say fear arises from turning our back on God, from turning away from God. And then we could say that the atonement well, the third step is the only remedy for lack of love is perfect love. And the fourth step is perfect love is the atonement. So perfect love is God's way, we could say as well. Perfect love is the atonement. Perfect love is the at one Perfect love is God's way. Perfect love is God's way. You say, you know, God's way or the highway. <laughs> it is the highway, right? <laughs> God's way is the highway. Highway. <laughs> it's the higher self. The holy, high, the holy, higher spirit self. <laughs> and that's the highway. God's way. And that we come to realize that all we did was turn our back on God, turn away from God. <laughs> and then all we're doing now is taking, yet yeah, the high way, God's way, the high way. And we realize that we're listening to the higher self. We're listening to God's voice. Maybe next time someone says, do it this way or take the highway, you go, hmm. <laughs> the highway is God's way. Because I burnt the word should. <laughs> so I don't need to do it that way or do it, take the highway. I burnt the word should. We realize that, uh, <laughs> reading back, Ron had written on the board. See Ron just left, but Ron had written on the board earlier. When we get clear on what we do want, we stop shooting and we just do it. Otherwise, we're full of should. <laughs> full of shooting <laughs> on ourselves. We realize that we're just getting out of the way. Yeah, we got we got to get over it and let it go and move on. Robbie we'll right on the board. Yeah. Letting go and moving on. Accepting the highway, accepting God's way. I'm looking back at the section here. So there's those four steps. I'll just read them straight out again. So this is for the correction for the lack of love. Know first that this is fear. That's the first step. Second step is fear arises from lack of love. The third step is the only remedy for lack of love is perfect love. The fourth step is perfect love is the atonement. We choose the atonement. And then it goes on, uh, Jesus tells us, we have emphasized that the miracle or the expression of atonement is always a sign of real respect from the worthy to the worthy. 
So what I hear there is from heart to heart. That's the respect, from heart to heart. This work is re-established by the atonement. When we are heart to heart, we realize...